Okay, I will just make it brief. So uh, this is Carsten. Carsten is part of the part-time part of the part-time scientists uh, who want to send a rover to a place where it's very hard to do 3D printing. So uh, enjoy this talk labeled uh, 3D printing on the moon, the future of space exploration. Stage is yours. Hi. Um, so who of you knows about um, the Google Lunar X Prize? Just, ah, OK. Is <laughs> it what? OK, it's OK. You don't have to know. I was just checking. Um, OK, so. We're a team called the Part-Time Scientists, and um, we we're, were funded like um, 2008, so that's quite a while ago, um, with six people. And um, as of today, we are about 35 people that are working um, on a mission to the moon. And of those uh, 35 people, we have uh, now 11 employees, uh, which makes the name Part-Time Scientists a lie. <laughs> so, on, this, uh, on the corner of the slide, you see the, our new logo. It's a PT scientist. And um, yeah, well, uh, we don't know what the PT stands for yet, but um, we will figure it out eventually. <laughs> so, um, so for those of you that have seen our presentation last year, it was um, we, we did win the milestone prizes. So we won 750,000 US dollars for qualifying our rover. Um, which is quite nice. And um, we also got a new partner, which is a bit significant. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's Audi. And uh, yeah, we are cooperating with, uh, with the DLR, with NASA Ames, and, uh, and various other partners to, to get this mission done. Um, oh, but, yeah, and the Google Lunar X Prize is a competition where you can get 30 million bucks for sending a robot to the moon. So, um, um, and this is <laughs> where we. This is our vision. We want to send a rover to the moon, and um, it should l somehow look like this. This is actually what we are currently working on. So that was <laughs> that was me yesterday. Um, the the lines main everything is fine, which is why I had no time to present uh, to prepare the presentation. So I hope it's okay still. Um, yeah, we are working very tirelessly on uh, on getting that done. Uh, the cool thing is that our new rover is actually a little bit bigger again. You know, we, we started with like a very small one, and we figured out that ah, it's too small. And we increased it a bit, and we, yeah, it's too small again. And uh, the last uh, size increase came in the form of the of the wheels because um, we found out that with with more surface um, we can um, climb up higher slopes, and also um, decreasing the weight was very helpful. And the cool thing about um, the new rover is that um, the wheels that you see on the left-hand side um, is a new wheel, and it's 200 grams lighter despite being bigger. And this was a, we were able to do that because um, the left one is fully 3D printed. And um, this is pretty darn cool. So we are a big fan of 3D printing for everything we do, not just because we are always tight on um, time. So. It's also very helpful that you can get uh, 3D printed stuff quickly. Um, we could be more organized, but yeah, well, we have 3D printers, which is much cooler. <laughs> Except, so um, 3D printing is hard. Um, you probably know, especially those that made it, uh, made the ones on your own. It's, um, yeah, it's it's very tough to to get it right because you the material that you get out of the 3D printer is not what you. Yeah, actually um, expect and uh, what can be used. But we want to do it on the moon anyway. Um, so yeah, this is just a nice picture that came up um, from NASA. No, was it NASA? It came up and it's looking very really nice. So we want to take the picture of that. And we want to land near Apollo 17. So that's uh, the Taurus Littoral Valley, um, which is near the equator. And it's, uh, we, want to, we want to land like five kilometers near it, and uh, there is in a, in a one kilometer landing ellipse. So that's hopefully the landing area, not the impact area. Um, <laughs> we, are, we are working on that. Now, one of the dates we saw, we, I, I suggested for, um, for sending a rover to the moon was uh, to start on the 7th December uh, in 2017, uh, because that's like 45 years after Apollo 17 happened. And also, we would land on Christmas. And so they, if, if someone asked what 
uh, what we would do on Christmas, it would be like, I could say, well, I made a new crater on the moon. <laughs> so um, hopefully we don't do the crater thing. Um, so the reason why we chose Apollo 7 in this pass is, uh, is mostly because it, it has a very interesting geological property. There is, um, it was the one mission where NASA say, oh, we don't do it just for show, we actually want to do science. And so they took a geologist with them. And uh, so there is, some, there is some known data about the geology of, uh, of Apollo 17. And um, so that's one of the reasons we want to go there. The other reason is um, the lunar rover vehicle that you can see here. Um, we, want to do, we want to do significant science when we go there. Now, we, just, we don't just want to win the Google Analytics Prize, we want to do real science there. And we want to, one of the uh, science objectives, as it was uh, said by, by NASA, is that they want to see how, um, how the stuff on the surface, um, after 43 years of exposure, is, uh, is still there, you know, whether it was uh, shot into little pieces or, you know, Find, maybe they find some other reason why they didn't, uh, why we didn't find anything there, but um, yeah, it's so they, it, it, the lunar rover vehicle is made of all kinds of things like leather and um, piano wire, fiberglass, and it's interesting to see how that um, how that works. So this is Apollo 17. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, but now for the interesting part about um, 3D printing on the moon. So. The, the surface material of the moon um, is made up of um, lunar regolith, which is made of uh, silicon, aluminum, titanium, iron, oxygen, and kind of other stuff. And it's very, very fine powdered. So uh, when you think about the moon, it doesn't have any atmosphere. So there is nothing uh, that could you know, sw um, transport the, uh, the, the lunar dust around. So it's, it's sitting there for years and years and you know, millions of years. And there are always all those tiny uh, micro meteorites which are bombarding the surface and smashing the surface into very, very, very fine powder. And uh, this, this powder um, has some very interesting properties. So the question is, how could you actually use this material for doing 3D printing on the moon. And there are like three options. One we like very much, um, this is the microwave-based manufacturing. So the idea behind that is that, that you're using like an ordinary microwave, or the magnetron of it, and you, you melt up the material because it's, uh, it contains some iron. And uh, then you can, you can get a solid surface of that. Uh, the problem with that is the, uh, the regular simulants, which are used for, for testing, for various testing of, you know, um, uh, of testing rovers or spacesuits or um, anything alike, they are, um, well, you can microwave them, but nothing happens, um, which is kind of bad for testing because um, this makes it very difficult. Um, but there is one interesting property that is at least known for, um, for some of the Apollo 11 and Apollo 17 samples. And this is that it contains some iron. Um, you can see those, those little iron, um, this is elemental iron that is enclosed in the, uh, in the glass. And um, this is very, um, this absorbs the the microwave energy very efficiently. And so with, with very little energy, you can actually um, get a liquid phase between the, um, the particles, which, which then um, heats up even more. And there is a runaway thermal um, reaction going on that, so that you get a solid material after you bombarded it with, um, with microwave. And the question is, um, what can you do with that? I mean, the microwave is not as focused as, for example, uh, as a laser, where you, with a laser, um, if you, okay, let, let me start a little bit earlier. So if you, if you want to do um, laser sintering on, on the Earth, you, or actually anywhere, but if you want to do, you have to, you, so you take aluminum powder, and you take a laser, and you melt it, 
And then you put on another layer of, uh, of this aluminum powder, and then you melt it again. And with that process, you can actually 3D print aluminum. And if you, um, if you want to do that on the moon, you, could, um, you can create very fine structures. But with the microwave, you are not, such, not so focused. And the question is, can you still do anything interesting with that? And the answer to that is yes. If you, if you have a microwave, um, you can actually make a surface coating of, um, of the regolith. The problem that you have when, for example, the Apollo astronauts were, uh, were coming back into, the, um, into their capsule, they had the problem that the regolith is so fine that it actually went through their, um, through the spacesuits, and they got uh, black fingers. And so the idea is when, you are, when you're creating a surface coating by microwaving um, the, the surface, then you have a solid, um, a solid thing where you can drive on, where you don't um, generate such, uh, such uh, as much um, dust when you're landing or when you're driving on it. And thus, if you want to build a lunar base um, and you have to go out often, then you know, not dealing with as much regulus um, is a very nice property to have. Also, there's some, um, there some interesting ideas that you can actually make a radio dish um, when you, with that. So you take a regular grater and um, you surface coat and you have an almost perfect antenna, or, well, eventually, um, <laughs> after a few decades of work. Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, one of the ideas that was proposed is uh, this boring lawnmower. Um, but uh, we think of something cool, like this one. Uh, so the idea is that you have, that you have the magnetrons on the, on the bottom side, and while you are driving, you're actually irradiating the surface, and this um, irradiation brings the surface, uh, the, the material to about 1,200 degrees Celsius in a very quick time. And this starts the melting process so that you get the ni very nice coating. And because we're using microwave, this is, this is a very power efficient way of doing that. This is also why we, um, we are aiming to send a little experiment to the, to the surface of the moon with the microwaving thing. Also, uh, it's, it's very interesting to do that because um, we are very power constrained in our payload opportunities that we have. And we are also uh, we want to do something simple, and if you want to build uh, a laser regulus printer, then um, stuff gets very messy. But I will show you some pictures um, later on. So, if you if you want to go into additive manufacturing, um, there is significantly more to uh, to building a 3D printer than just um, having the, the ability to melt the material. Um, the problem with, with the regulus is that not all material is well suited. So you need, to, you need to collect the material, you need to refine it in some way, and then you can use, for example, a, um, a laser to melt it. Uh, the other thing that, uh, for example, ESA is thinking about, you, who of you knows actually the Moon Village um, idea of ESA? Okay, yeah, ESA is very popular. Um, <laughs> I find that people know more about NASA than they do about ESA, um, interestingly. So uh, what they want to do is um, they, want to do, they want to print a 3D base. Uh, no, they want to print, 3D print a base. And they want to do it with, um, with a clue that they are taking with them. And so they want to, uh, they want to use a binding material for, for the printing process. And we think that's mm, maybe not the best idea. If you, if you can do it just with energy, which you have plenty of because you're on the moon and there is no atmosphere, then that's significantly better than using a binding material. And um, yeah, so they are, ESA is supporting the idea of using a binding material, uh, uh, but uh, I think that the, the laser printing one is the one that, that we, uh, we are using now and uh, which is probably the most mature, and so that's probably pretty good. But how do you actually um, separate the materials that you 
that you want to use for printing. And uh, so not all of the material is printable um, or this is ready for sintering. And so you want to, um, you want to collect material that is um, small, that is uh, you at best uh, fine powdered, which you have plenty, but the cost size, uh, the, the size of the particles is, uh, is very oddly shaped. So um, it's, it's a little bit difficult to, um, to collect the material and to process it so that it can be used for lazy laser 3D printing. And um, this is where this sucker comes in. Um, it's a lunar soil magnetic collector or lunar soil sucker, um, as it was called. And it's basically a rail gun in reverse. So you, you take magnetic fields and uh, you, you use the property that um, the, the regular material or the part that you're interested in is actually uh, magnetic. And so you're transporting the, mater uh, the material in this uh, sucker and uh, it's floating in some reservoir and then you can do your whole 3D printing with the laser melting and uh, putting layer on top on layer. Um, yeah, that should work. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, when you're, when you're doing a mission to the moon, you know, for the first time in a, in a few decades, and you're doing it as a, uh, as a private entity, and you started as part-time scientist, that's not the thing you want to do on the first try. So we're, we're keeping the best for the um, next missions, so baby steps first, uh, not make an impact crater, and then um, microwave um, the lunar soil. Actually, someone did try, uh, did use the, uh, the lunar regular simulants that are available and actually built such a 3D printer, which is easy if you're on Earth and you have the regular printer and, you can, and you're actually sitting by the printer and you can you know, do a Russian repair by knocking it when it's failing. And um, the results are, well, um, like this. I don't know if that is good or not, um, but it's something and it was 3D printed. Awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, uh, so the good thing is that in theory, the, um, uh, the laser bell based melting should actually work. The problem with, uh, with laser based melting is that a lot of the um, energy that you are, so if you're, if you're building a laser, um, a lot of energy that you put into it is not converted into optical energy, which goes out of the laser uh, thingy. <laughs> and then you point it at, uh, at the material that is not black. Um, it is, in this case, it's more likely gray, so you have some reflectance. And so a lot of energy is wasted uh, in this way when you're using a laser. But as said, the advantage is that you can make very fine structures or as fine as this one. I actually don't know if it's inch or centimeters. Um, it's small, it's something. <coughs> I would give it a, a C for effort. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you, if you know 3D printers, you know, especially the, uh, the aluminum sintering things, it's, uh, it's very difficult to get right. Um, with the, the problem with 3D printing is always the material feed, right? It's, it's, uh, you're, you have the material, you have the PLA, for example, and you put it through the nozzle, and in theory it should work. In practice, well, not often or not always. Um, and this is, the, this is the idea as presented by, by ESA. And, um, well, um, as a company, we have to think about business cases and th the best we could come up with was, uh, well, we are helping them do this. And uh, this is the, the ESA vision of having a 3D printed uh, multi-dome structure or moon village as they call it. And they, they are working on it. Uh, I don't know what the, what the current state is, but they are planning to do it. And um, as I said, they have those, um, those clue-based printers and I think Printing, printing a 3D, no, 3D printing a base is a, is a very good idea because you want to use as much of the resources um, that are locally available as possible. Because bringing one, so I, to give you some perspective, so we want to bring something on the moon, which is our rover, which is about 30 kilograms. Um, actually, we want to bring a bit more, but 
Um, back to that um, later. So we start with 30 tons of rocket on Earth. And uh, in, we are, until the, we, are, uh, we are getting into the orbit, we are down to one and a half tons. And the, the one and a half tons, they, um, they fly to the moon, and then they do the soft landing part thingy. And um, then we unload the rover, we collect the money from Google, make a party, <laughs> and um, we, we get about, uh, yeah, tops about 100 kilograms of payload mass to the surface, starting from 30 tons on Earth. So the ratio is very bad. And so the, you want to use as much uh, resources as possible, which is called in situ resource utilization, which is uh, now a very active topic uh, among planetary researchers because, well, because of the rocket equation and the ratio that I told you about. Another very fancy idea about how you could actually um, print something um, is to make a thermite um, reaction. So you take the material, um, split it into the right parts, and then you ignite it, and you should have a thermite reaction, which you can use for, um, for casting then. Well, it was, apparently it was tested with some simulants, and it should work. Um, whether it really does, well, um, I don't know. But, um, yeah. What is a thermite reaction? Oh, uh, thermite is the, um, what is it, iron and aluminum? Iron, iron, iron oxide. oxide and? Aluminum. aluminum. Ah, yeah. So you take... Um, you take iron oxide and aluminum and you ignite it and then they start off a um, runaway reaction and um, y this is used for, for example, for gluing together the uh, railways. Uh, so it's, it's, very, uh, it's a very nice uh, reaction. It goes, the temperature goes up very high, um, which makes it a little bit hard to handle. Uh, so not on the first try. Um, yeah, so I told you about those ideas. Um, we are looking for people that do help us, for example. And uh, the, so the question is, um, what are we next? Uh, what, we, what are we up next? And among the things that we are working on right now is our rover. We are very happy about it, um, if it works as uh, we plan. And um, this next thing we start on the, uh, with next year is to to build actually the lander. And uh, so if you're interested in building a uh, cold gas flying thing like this, something like this, um, you're, you're very invited to, um, to, to join us and uh, to, to shoot us an email. And one of the things that, um, that I forgot to mention, we, um, we also have payload opportunities. So we, we want to, we are selling actually some of the payload that we can take to the moon. And if you're, if you're interested in helping us to, um, to shoot microwaves at some, re uh, some real re lunar regulus, um, we're looking to forward uh, to hearing from you. And unfortunately, because uh, I didn't have much time to prepare some presentation and I actually already Done. Uh, but I hope you have uh, ton of, tons of questions, and uh, uh, I hope I can uh, I can answer them to you. Sorry. Thanks. That was a. Am I on? Yes. That was a quick and uh, I found it very interesting talk. So. If you need to leave now, please do so quietly. And uh, if you have any questions, please line up at the microphones on the uh, right or on the left side. And please keep the voices down so we can hear the questions from the microphones. So if you want to talk, then also leave. That would be very nice. So please be quiet right now. Quiet. Very quiet. Okay, very good. So first question on the right side, the front microphone. 
Hello. Uh, so you mentioned uh, a rocket of about 30 tons. Uh, do you, are you currently engaging with anyone uh, to the, is building these rockets or selling them? Um, <laughs> Yeah, we are in negotiations with um, with the Indians um, regarding the PSLV XL. So we want to we plan to use that one. We are also in discussions with uh, with other alternatives. Um, yes, so we are we are in discussions uh, about that. Okay, are there internet questions? There are at the moment no internet questions. So next question from again the right microphone. Uh, hello. Uh, can't you simply melt uh, the regolith by focusing sunlight? Oh yeah, that's um, that was the third alternative that um, that we were also thinking about. The problem with uh, with that is that um, you need to have uh, so the target temperature that you're aiming for is uh, about 1,200 1, um, degrees Celsius. If you want to use um, if you want to use uh, sunlight, you would need to collect enough to create about uh, 40 watts of, uh, of heat uh, in a very small uh, area. So you will need to have a rather large um, optical thing. And if you know optical things, those are fragile. And launching in a rocket is the exact opposite of, uh, you know, of having it shipped by DHL. Well, I don't know if that's... <laughs> I don't know who I was insulting with that, you know, DHL or the rockets, but um, anyway, so it's uh, you. You can take the um, you could you, in theory it would be possible, yes, and it has been tested. Um, the problem is that you need to have a mechanical um, constructions for uh, for focusing and for getting into the moon. And after you have done that, uh, you also want to do something useful with that. So you need to. Yeah, you need to just f not just focus it on a point, but you need to uh, move around the focus point as well. So from a mechanical construction point of view, that gets very difficult, which is why we especially like the idea about the microwaving, where you just you know create um, it's it's not really 3D printing, but you're um, you're showing some interesting prospects about the uh, the regular surface, and that is um, that is not possible with the simulant. Uh, so this is why we are preferring that. Okay, next question on the left side, the front microphone, that's you. Um, so I think there is currently also a challenge um, from NASA to do 3D printing of habitable modules on Mars. Uh, yep. Do you have some like uh, something to say about that, like what the difference is to Moon and what <coughs> methods might work? Um, I know about the challenge. Uh, I think it's a very good idea. Um, we, I didn't investigate it too closely, to, um, I have to say. But I think that um, in some ways, the lunar regulus um, is, is easier to handle because you have, um, you have those uh, elemental um, iron that is sitting in the class beads. And, uh, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, so it's, well, I, I've it's both very difficult to, to, uh, to 3D print on the moon and to 3D print on the, uh, on the Mars, but I cannot exactly tell you which one is more challenging. It's a, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I don't know. But um, I could imagine that when you're, when you're thinking about 3D printing on the, uh, on the Mars, you're uh, most probably not thinking about, uh, or maybe you do. I was thinking about robotic missions. So if you, when I'm thinking about Mars, there are always people there already, while on the Moon there is no one, which is stupid. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> yeah. Okay, a question from the internet. Yeah, the first question is: Is it possible to focus a microwave sharp enough to get laser quality uh, precision in the 3D print? That's a very good question. Um, in in theory, with some um, antenna designs, um, it should be possible, but it might be difficult. What do you say? Um, it depends on the wavelengths. So, yeah, so it, uh, the expert answer is it depends on the wavelengths. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I would say that yeah, it's uh, it's definitely more challenging than having a laser where you have uh, the concurrent light anyway. So it's uh, it would be difficult, probably a bit more difficult to. Um, to to focus it, but 
the interesting thing about, you know, we know from with a laser that it, uh, it works with a simulant, and so we can test it on Earth. But with a microwave, um, it doesn't work on, the moon, uh, on, on Earth. And so I think it's more interesting to test that one out first. Uh, also, it's more energy efficient. Okay, again from the microphone on the left side. Um, yeah, uh, first of all, thanks for your very nice um, presentation. Um, I think I, I kind of uh, imagined something completely different from, you know, as for uh, 3D printing. But um, your, this microwave vehicle that you showed that basically creates streets, right? Or yeah. uh, paths. Um, if you want to make a structure out of it, how do you raise it up? Like, how do you build something with it? Um, so, let me go back with that. So, um, the basic idea from um, the, that Isa is proposing is say um, that you actually have um, some uh, some clue thingies. So uh, they are applying clue at certain parts uh, or binding material, to be more precise, and um, and then they're using um, bulldozer kinds of things to to put on the next uh, the next layer. And uh, it was with microwave, you could actually do the same. So you can uh, you can build uh, one layer, then you put on uh, the next material on top, and then you go over it again. The problems the problems with that is that uh, we we don't have enough samples to to know anything about the material that is that is deep uh, within the regulus. So we know that um, it, uh, the the microwave based thing had, has been tested with Apollo 17 dust, um, about 80 grams of it. Um, that was collected from the surface. The problem is we don't know whether the same properties are um, are applying uh, at material at a, at a bigger depth. So there is uh, there is a lot of research that um, that could be done on the moon um, to know about that. But that would be the basic way of building something that you um, you you put you use a bulldozer, put up material, you um, microwave it. You put the next layer on. This is not for printing a, a gearbox or something. This is for building structures like like these. Okay. Next question. The right microphone in the front. Yeah, I think my question is more for you, specialist in front. But um, how do you like intend to 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 make those microwaves in uh, on the moon? You use mag magnetrons or like? I mean, yeah. it's, it's not something that is light or like. And you need a lot of power, so actually, this is the this is the funny thing about uh, about the magnetron. It's um, uh, the energy that is uh, that you need for for getting the material up to uh, up to 1,200 degrees is actually just um, 200 watts, and you just need it for uh, what was it? I think it was 30 seconds um, yeah. because you have the uh, because you have the thermal runaway uh, reaction going on yeah. when. Uh, uh, with the microwave, so that's so you don't need uh, that much energy. Um, so that's one of the significant advantages over laser. And uh, about the weight and uh, the size of the magnetrons, well, yeah, that's uh, uh, and the eating, Pardon? like you have like uh, excess eating for the what for the magnetron. Yeah, because you're gonna like dissipate. There is no atmosphere, so yeah, you I mean, need, like yeah. radiator or something. Yeah, getting rid of heat is uh, is always very difficult because you don't have an atmosphere, so you need to um, you need to dissipate it by uh, infrared radiation. But this is, for example, something that that we are doing uh, in our rover as well. If we need to uh, we need to get hit, uh, rid of the heat, and the basic way you are doing that is that, um, for example, with a with a solar panel, we are building a shadowed area, and we have the uh, one side of the tunnel where the electronics uh, are sitting in the rover um, is pointing at the black. Um, uh, at the black stars, uh, or the, the black uh, space, and so you have um, here. You have um, then a lot of um, cooling that is going on, and radiative cooling can be very efficient, especially when you're uh, when you're using um, special coatings. So I didn't know that, but it's really cool. There's um, there's a color that you can put on something, and um, it only has a 10% solar acceptance. So you you just get 10%. Uh, from the solar heat um, inward, but you can still radiate 90% of the um, of the energy that uh, that it's heating uh, that's emitting. So that's pretty cool. 
Okay, the next two questions from the internet. Yeah, they're completely unrelated. I'll uh, start with the first one. Uh, the, since the regular simulants are not really adequate, do you know of any robot missions that are planned to bring some of the stuff back? Um, if I remember correctly, the Chinese mission, the last one, was actually, um, there was a flyby, and they were um, testing the whole bring material back mechanism. And it was the next uh, mission, which should be Changi 3 or 4. Um, they um, actually want to uh, bring material back. So that will be the first time in a few decades that new material from the, uh, from the moon is coming back. And the completely unrelated question, uh, what are the requirements to join the PT scientists? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, well, um, well, actually, the, um, the requirement is that, um, that you're interested in doing something crazy and uh, that you're passionate about what you're doing, that you, uh, that you want to contribute. You know, you can, um, you can contribute as, um, uh, in part time, so you don't have to quit your job and start with us. Um, if you if you want to be working for us uh, full time, um, it gets a bit more challenging. Um, but we are also we are always accepting new uh, new applications. And uh, so if you're interested in helping us um, doing anything with us, um, just send me an email with your uh, with what you're interested in doing, and um, we'll find something. There should be a form on the website which usually does not work. Um, <laughs> where you can apply officially. Okay, we still have a few questions. Uh, the left-hand side, rear microphone, please. Hi. Um, what layer size are we looking at with the microwaving? Um, like, maybe with the rover, or how, how thick can you microwave? Um, Like I microns, millimeters. Like no, actually, uh, actually, it's uh, it's quite thick, so it's uh, it's about centimeters. Um, if I remember correctly, there is um, in the paper that they were talking about um, three to five centimeters, but I would have to look it up. There is a um, there was a very nice uh, paper about from uh, from someone called Taylor, um, who is uh, really into geological things and. Um, it's uh, it's very worth reading uh, about it. It's uh, it's also cited in the slides. Um, let me find that one. Uh, also, yeah, here. So it's uh, the microwave sintering of lunar soil by Taylor. Um, if you Google Taylor and lunar thing, um, there are multiple Taylors, but they're all doing 3D printing on the moon, which I find very <laughs> <laughs> which I find very interesting. Um, I think that uh, that the devs was uh, rather surprisingly big. And are you going to do it with your rover, or is it just? No, so we are not going to do it with a rover, okay. or very most likely not. Um, the idea would be uh, on our rovers we have we have something that's called drop container, which um, are um, uh, yeah, triangular structures that are sitting below the, so the solar panel, and they can actually fall on the surface of the moon. And uh, then they deploy, and then you have like uh, some solar power um, on the sides, and you have uh, some experiments in the middle. And the idea is to use one of those drop containers for uh, putting the microwave uh, experiment in there. So it would yeah, drop on the surface uh, somewhere outside our landing area. Thank you. OK, the next question from the right-hand side microphone. Hello. Um, so you mentioned this uh, stepwise procedure where you, uh, you do something less um, ambitious, like uh, your first goal is to land the rover. Have you considered uh, applying that to the 3D printing too and perhaps starting out with something like, like what was uh, mentioned by ESA, like bringing a, a binding uh, agent and, and trying to see if that'll produce usable 3D prints first? Well, um yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, that would be a fair idea. Um, but on the other hand, microwaves. So, <laughs> um, uh, the microwaves are. You know, I'm a. So, so I'm a computer scientist, and I like microwaves. I don't like chemi chemicals. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's. Uh, I think that um, 
that uh, doing the microwave thing is uh, easier than, uh, than probably the binding material thing. And also from a scientific perspective, it, it adds more value because you know that with a binding material, you can, you can create structures. And uh, with a laser, you can, you can build uh, things as well. But with a, the microwaving thing does not work with the simulants, which is, I think is, uh, makes it even more interesting to actually try it on the surface as, um, on the first try. OK, another question from that microphone, please. Um, how do you plan? How do you plan to uh, look at the decomposing rover of Apollo 17? Do you just want to take a picture, or will the rover have some special device? Um, yeah, so um, the thing is, uh, our rover, um, uh, as you saw. Oh, OK. So the question was um, how we are actually going to analyze the um, um, the rover material. And the thing is that, um, as you can see in our rover, we have uh, we have um, you have three cameras, and uh, two of which are color uh, sensors, which are wide angle, so those are used for driving. And the middle one is um, is a tiller lens with a black and white sensor. And uh, in front of the sensor, there is a there is a color filter, so that you can look at different wavelengths. And with that, we can do some um, some analysis uh, about uh, about the material that uh, and how it is behaving. The problem um, actually would be to drive up to the rover and uh, bump into it or something like this because there are some um, some guidelines on on how to approach the Apollo landing sites and um, there are some protection um, areas where we are not allowed to um, to land and there are the protective areas where we are not allowed to drive in and um, fortunately uh, at Apollo 17 the um, the lunar rover the that they use for driving. It's actually standing outside of the protection area for driving by. I don't know if that is um, intentional or a mishap. So we would not be violating it by bumping into it, but we are not trying to. OK, I'm looking at the signal angel. Does the internet have any questions? The internet is very happy about the questions that are being asked right here. So the rear left microphone there, please, the next question. Um. Besides lasers and um, microwaves, have you um, the, the moon have a, good, a really good vacuum, um, like a old old school cathode ray tube, um, and um, have we the possibility to use um, electron beam um, cannon on 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 the regolith? Mm, um, uh, so, <laughs> so uh, I mean, in theory, you can use um, you can use any heat source that is able to to get uh, the temperature of the regulars uh, to a certain degree uh, as of Celsius. So um, maybe um, I don't know if anyone tried. So I don't know. Sorry. OK, the next question from the right-hand side front microphone. Uh, have, you have you thought of um, printing parts of the rover at the moon? Because <laughs> then you wouldn't have to uh, send up so mo much mass. And uh, for example, you can could uh, send up a rover with little re gears, so you can drive to a better place for <laughs> printing bigger gears. Uh, <laughs> I, I know what you mean. Um, yeah. Yes. Have you actually used a 3D printer? Uh, <laughs> yes, I have. So the the problem is, you know, in theory. So I was I was at a presentation and uh, that was very funny. There was there was some guy who said, okay, I'm, uh, my next startup is about uh, making um, a, a solving a, pr a problem with the 3D printing industry, and that is that the data files that you are transmitting to the printer are not encrypted. And so I will, I will, uh, I will ensure that that Airbus can send um, the the three D printing files to a three D printer on an airport, and so they can replace a part um, on an airplane just in time. Um, if you use a three D printer, you know that is very far from how everything goes. <laughs> you know, it's uh, the even with. Uh, I mean, if you look at uh, at the um, 
at our alu aluminum wheel that you can see here, you still have those, those rings. And um, they are coming from, uh, from the fact that the material is contracting while you're printing it. And uh, this, while this is a very known problem uh, when you're using, um, how do you call Gießen? Um, when you're using casting techniques, and the software can compensate for that. But in 3D printing, this is still unknown. And uh, so, uh, you know, it would be nice to, to print something useful, um, but I think we are far from, from that. Okay. So baby steps first, <laughs> land on the moon softly, collect the money and uh, <laughs> print something. Okay, very good. We have a question on the left-hand side, front microphone. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm still kind of stuck with the building structure thing. Um, <laughs> and I, I, you know, I probably know that you can't answer all these questions and there are still qu um, well, answers to find. But um, if you have the rover that runs over the surface and then um, you know, beams microwaves at the ground, and then later have the bulldozer to put new soil, dust, whatever, onto um, the microwave plat, and then again have the, the robot go onto it again. If you go up like, I don't know, two meters high or so, at some point your robot will pr have problems climbing that wall, wouldn't it? And wait, sorry. Uh, and so my question is, how far away from the soil do you have to be to microwave it? Like, can't you build a satellite that, <laughs> I don't know. Please <laughs> 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 be done. <laughs> So, um, the energy the energy is uh, is lost by the radius square. So, if you want to deposit, um, like if, if, when you, if you want to deposit 50 watts into the lunar surface, um, and you are 3,000 kilometers away, which is like an, uh, a good orbit for a lunar satellite. Um, just do the mass, you know, um, that's a lot. <laughs> you, would, you would need a really big um, satellite. And then, uh, then I would probably use uh, laser because lasers are cool. <laughs> and, um, but the, the basic idea about the, the first question is actually, um, well, you define the slopes to be uh, in such a way that you can actually drive them up. And you also see that um, they are using those, uh, how do you call them, the, the, the caterpillar thingies. Well, um, that's a bad idea. So this is an artist rendering, you know, it's a, it's a good idea, but uh, the practical problems uh, still lay ahead a lot. Uh, there will be a lot of PhD theses about uh, this stuff. Okay, we uh, actually still have time for Q&A. So uh, there are questions from the internet. Second Andrew. Yeah, there's one more question from the internet, and they're still not quite over that regolith simulant thing. <laughs> uh, so the question is, why are the regolith simulants so bad? Um, so uh, let me find that slide. So um, the thing that uh, when you are usually when you have iron on uh, on Earth-bound things, yeah, it's usually an oxide, um, and those oxides don't um, react as well to uh, to the uh, to the microwave as an elemental um, unoxidized iron. And the interesting thing about uh, about the lunar surface is that um, with the bombardment of the um, of the micrometeorites, there are some uh, there are those glass beads um, which are which are actually forming. And with the radiation, um, some um, iron oxides actually. Uh, Degenerate into into this elemental iron, and usually r uh, regular simulants are done by the ingredients. So you you look at um, you look at the regulars that you collected on the moon, and you you then you take in all the materials so that when you're uh, doing a spectros spectrum uh, then when you're analyzing the, the ingredients, you you get the same uh, bill of materials to say. And uh, you then you look at the crane size and you make it make it fit like this, and that's about uh, the state of uh, of current lunar regular simulants. They um, they are not exposed to um, to the radiation from the from the sun that you have. They are not 
uh, they are not in vacuum. Um, they usually don't have um, those uh, those glass beads forming. They are not shot at with micrometeorites. So um, in this way, um, you have the most regulars don't actually have those nanophosphate um, um, uh, nanophase iron uh, in them. That's the whole point of it. Okay, so there's another question on the left-hand side. Real microphone, please. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you ever uh, investigated and researched the idea of uh, making something like bricks by just compacting uh, the lunar dust or something like that? Um, yes, there have been um, there have been tests with uh, uh, with some of the material, uh, but it was found that it's uh, because of the shape of the material. You, it's it's very um, it's very coarse. It has very rough edges, and um, because of that, um, it's 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 not very well compressible, um, to say it like this. Um, I don't mm. know if that actually makes it a good uh, building material for something like this or not. Um, hmm. Yeah. So the so the answer is uh, I don't know because uh, no, we didn't try. <laughs> um, uh, but I, I, I would say that um, the density, you can't compress it um, enough. Uh, you will always have some, some air or some vacuum trapped in it, and uh, it might be difficult. Mm -hmm. OK. OK, same microphone, please. Have you looked at the Solar Sinter project? The what? The Solar Sinter project. Uh, that was the guy with the big ass uh, Yeah, thing about the, one square meter, I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so th that's really cool. Um, uh, but as I said earlier um, in the question, is that the problem with uh, with bringing um, the big uh, badass uh, you know um, lens to the moon is uh, bringing it there, and also the weight. Uh, this weighs a lot, and then you still need to have the mechanicals to um, to to move it and uh, to do something with it. So uh, it's a really cool project. I like that, but it's uh, very difficult to do on the moon. OK. OK, so on the right-hand side, front microphone, please. It's just a follow-up to that BRICS idea. Maybe we could uh, put, put some lunar dust together, then microwave it into the brick, and then use a robot to put the bricks together, <laughs> and then microwave them together. Yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. Uh, yeah, baby steps first. <laughs> OK, a question from the internet, please. Yeah, there's one more question from the internet. Uh, why don't you just dig caves to build houses uh, or build a cube <laughs> build a cube with microwaved regolith and dig a hole in it or mill it? So, sorry, what? What was the first part? The first part was, why don't you just dig a cave and build houses? Oh, yeah. Um, so you don't actually have to dig a cave. Um, there are already caves um, that you can use and that are ready to move in. So um, <laughs> this is, uh, <laughs> but you, put it, you still have to put in something there, uh, but um, like interior design. But um, <laughs> this, uh, so this, is, this is one of the ideas that is actually actively talked about. So the cool thing about the lunar surface is that you actually have something that's called lava tubes. And um, some of those um, lava tubes uh, um, have openings where you can actually drive into. And um, I think this is, a, this is a very interesting idea to, um, to build a settlement uh, by you know, becoming lunar um, yeah, cavemen uh, again. <laughs> but um, this is not us. So we have also, Isa, Isa wants to do 3D printing. And you know, whoever pays us, uh, we will deliver. And the second part of the, of the question was uh, build a cube with microwaved regolith and dig a hole in it or a mill in it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sure. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so fr fr from, uh, there, are, there are many ideas that are ranging from, from something we should do in our first mission and something that um, Maybe someone, someone, someone should do. I would put it here. <laughs> OK. I see the microphones are empty right now. The internet is apparently satisfied also. 
That's a great thing. That was a great talk and a great Q&A session, especially. So thank you. Thank <laughs> you.